Yo, what's up? We out here, Bully Street Boys, episode Who's Counting, you feel me? Who's Counting. We out here, we got my boy Hector, we got our boy So Savage Joey, introduce yourself, bro, what you do? Um, just an artist, I make music, I'm from Long Beach, California, I moved to Arizona like two years ago, and took a break from the music, but now I'm back on that shit, about to drop hella music soon, that's about it, yeah. A lot of shit in the works, shit. Yeah. and now you got a video. Yeah. Coming out pretty soon. Oh, and, yeah. You got a release date? Nah, I'm trying to get my shit on all platforms first. Um, so I've been looking into like the distributors. Mm -hmm. and trying to figure out which one you want to go with. Yeah, because like, I want to make sure I can release it all at one time. Because I heard some of them like, they'll like, hold back for a day or two. Or something like that. So if I have to do it in the future, I'm looking like at a month out. Maybe drop everything. But it has a little hype right now. Like I posted a snippet on Instagram and shit. Like... Just a thriller of like me like playing the song and how people were fucking with it, DM me and shit. And I post um a trailer of the music video on Snapchat and hell the heads were like wanted me to drop it. So I wanna keep the hype going so I don't wanna wait too long for the national to go like, yeah. go away and then when I drop it it's not gonna get as much love. Yeah. I saw the preview. Well, I saw the whole video actually, you yeah. know, because you know, got connections. Industry and, uh, plug. That's just hard. That's just tight. Um, yeah, I was over there with Ant and Steve. They're like, yo, come through, uh, like record, we'll just chill, whatever. So I went through and uh, they're they're showing me my spiral video and they're like, oh, you want to see Joey's video? So I was like, all right, yeah. let's see what's up. That shit came out hard. I was like, I wasn't, ex I was expecting like, I don't know what I was expecting. I was just like, let's just do it. Cause it happened like last minute. Like I hit him up. I was like, oh, Santana, blah, blah, blah. Like sent me an Instagram. I want to get a video done. And I was like, um, when are you free? He was like, I'm down whenever you are. And I was like, all right, let's do this weekend then. And he was like, I don't know about this weekend. I might be busy. And I was like, bro, I just asked you. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I just asked you. Shout out to Ant. <laughs> it, no, it, it was all good. Though. Whenever. He was like, whenever. <laughs> whenever. And I was like, and he was like, how about um tonight or tomorrow? And I was like, fuck, tonight? And I was like, you know, I got a baby and stuff. So I was like, let me see. So I asked my baby mama first if it's cool. She watched the baby. No daddy duties. And then. um, Respecting women out here. <laughs> That's what we do nah, all then, day. And then I called up all the homies because they work and shit. And I was like can y'all be ready by 10? Like, so the homie, he's like, yeah, I'm gonna get off work early. Say less. Like, he used some of his paid time off to get off work early. I picked up one of the other homies and we made it work. So That's tight. It, ha it happened so fast that I didn't like really know what to expect because usually I would plan it out and like really have a vision for it. But we just went out and did it. Went to like a few different spots. Went to, um, by the new hospital. It was like an intersection where no one really goes through. So I went there. Went to the homie's garage and I went to my house and it came out hard and like, I like that shit. Yeah. That's cool. I like the purple, like, tint vibe. Like, yeah. dark shit. It's hella hard. Purple's my favorite color, so I was like, I wanted to throw that shit in. So the homie was like, let's use, a, use my garage. And I was like, you got those purple lights, say less. That shit was hard. Yeah. Shit, same day delivery from Ant? That's nah, what's up. It was like, he sent me back, like, the final version, like, two or three days after. And I was like, damn. I was like, you did that shit quick. Because I told him, I was like, take your time. Because I shot videos before, and they usually take, like, a week, maybe two weeks to, like, send me back the finished product. I don't mind if it comes out hard, like it's fine. Like I don't care. I like quality over quantity, you know. So I was like, because you already have like, videos out. Yeah. How many videos do you have out already? Um, just two. Two. But they're old. They're like two years old. Now that I look at them, I'm like, fuck, <laughs> those are cringe. But back then, <laughs> back, hey, back then it was a shit. So I was like, it's cool now. Like, when you make it, you're like, this is hard, and yeah. then you go back and you're like, the fuck. Yeah, that's why. <laughs> that's why soon I'm like, once I release this next song, but with the music video and everything, I'm deleting everything that was like before. That video. Don't do it. Why? Nah, that's Damn, just like, clearing out the hard drive. I just wanted because my rap name was different too. It wasn't so savage, Joey. It was Joey Savage. That was, that was my first rap name. But then I was like, nah, that shit kind of sounds like a little weak. And I was like, I like my Instagram name better. So all my old songs are released under that. But now I'm kind of changing like my image mm -hmm. and the way I sound and everything. Because back then I was using auto tune, like heavy. Yeah. And like, so that. I mean, I was young. I was only 14, like doing that shit. So I was like, my voice wasn't fully developed and shit. Like voice cracks and all that shit. Like, oh, hell yeah. yeah. You got the grown man voice yeah. now so. to go with the career. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so you say you should, like try to change your image? Yeah, not like my, the way I look or anything. Like I've always like been who I am. But I mean like my image has like how my music is going to sound and like how I want to like market myself and everything. 
Because before I was like, like I said, I was young, so I didn't do everything the right way. I was just like releasing music without like thinking about it, thinking anything. about it, like no promotion or anything. Because like I learned, like my homie, um, his name is Guy. We haven't talked in a minute, but he's my old manager. He would try to tell me he's smart. He's a model now. He does like models for like Nike and shit like that. Really? Yeah, he's like big. I haven't talked to him in forever. He's but... a male model. Yeah. Oh shit, he's a bad bitch, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he, he was trying to put me on game. Like me and him were the same age, but he was thinking more advanced than I was at the time because he really had a goal in mind and that was to be a model. But he was managing me at the same time, and he was like, "Look, you got to put money into this in order to receive some like, you know, outcome out of it." And I was like, "Nah, you know, I was like spending my money on clothes and shit like that. Like, I didn't care. I was like, if I put the music out, she just blow up. But nowadays, that's not how it works. You got to like." Really you gotta work. You gotta yeah, invest. I mean, the music's part of it, but if you're not getting promotion, if you're not getting your shit on all platforms, if you're not getting like Spotify playlists, your music and Spotify playlists, and stuff like that, it's not gonna work out. You know, it's gonna make it harder. I'm not saying it's impossible to just do it like the easy way. But There's just easier ways to go about it. Yeah, like you just have to put money into it, and uh, that's what I'm gonna do. You know, I'm gonna be more. I won't. I don't want to say professional because I like. This isn't a job. This is like just for fun, you know. And if I make it, I make it. If I don't, I don't. You know, I'm not like caring about it that much. But like, I'm gonna take it more like serious, I guess. But still have fun with it. I feel that. I mean, you're only 18 right now, right? Yeah. You just became an adult legally. Oh, that's just crazy. <laughs> Fuck. Hard You've been adult for more years though, right? Huh? You haven't been an adult longer. What do you mean, like? Like the government just recognized. Oh, You've been doing your thing, right? Yeah, the government sees me as an adult now, just because I turned 18. But I've been. I've been growing for a minute. I didn't like, like I said, I'm from Long Beach, so. The yeah. LBC. Yeah, like. It was good. <laughs> you know what? It's just like, when I grew up, my family and everything was always there for me. You know, they never abandoned me, but I was always out, like, either skating or I was with the homies. I was always doing something. I was always on my own as, like, as far as, like, going out and doing stuff. Like, if I came home, like, yeah, we had hard times or whatever and stuff like that, but I was always, like, fed and everything. Like, my parents always made sure I was good. But when I was going out, I was doing my own thing, you know? So you kind of have to be your own man when you go out, you know? Especially down there in California, because you don't want no one to bitch you. Yeah. Out here in these streets. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you went to a fucking, uh, you went to Frontier. Yeah. Now I went to a hell of different high schools. I've been to five different high schools when I was in high school. So when I was a freshman, I went to St. Anthony's to play football. It was a private high school in Long Beach. That shit was terrible, like. Like money over there or what? Yeah, you had to pay to go there and shit like that. Is it more white people? Actually, no. It's not more white people. Rich black people? No, nah, like the school was full of people from like everywhere pretty much. Oh, they came in? They were, oh, yeah. Okay. You could be anywhere. Like it's not a, it's their own school district since they're a private high school. So you could be living like an hour away and if they want to accept you, they can, you know? So I went there my, fred, my first semester of freshman year. And then second semester, I was doing bad at the private school. So I went to Lakewood High School. Um, a lot of people from Long Beach know Lakewood High School is. Um, then after Lakewood High School, it was my sophomore year. And then after sophomore year, I went to Frontier because my grades at both those high schools were terrible. So I had to go to Frontier yeah. and get my grades up. <laughs> I had to get my grades up. Gotta go continue that yeah. shit. I had to go continue and I went to Frontier. Pass. Frontier is like pass, but you actually stay there and do classes. Yeah. Like you have different teachers. It's like regular high school, but every like bit of work you do. Yeah, my homies all went over there. So then after um, front after Frontier, that's when I moved here, and they didn't. I missed out on the whole semester when I moved to um, Arizona because I came too late. So I missed out on the whole semester, and then I went to Kingman High, and then I went to Pass. So that's five different high schools. You know? So I didn't really have a high school experience. Like I said, I, I was more running the streets than at school, when I, especially when I was looking back to California. All that gang shit. That was up. Gang activity, you know, regular day at that age. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We didn't say he's in a gang or anything, it's the activities, you know? I was running the streets. I was big, like, that shit. when I was doing my music at first, I started, shit, I started doing music in eighth grade. That's when I started, because me and my homie, um, me and my homie DP, or design, I don't know, whatever it wants to be called, me and him would be in the back of class. We had this one class, um, I don't even know the name of the class. We were always in the computer lab. It wasn't a computer class, so we were always in the computer lab. Sex ed? Some keyboarding? <laughs> some, some, some shit. <laughs> you said sex ed? <laughs> it was, it was well, like running up the history, <laughs> clearing history every, every day. It was some shit, but me and him would always be 
in that class, headphones in. I have one, he has one listening to Chief Keef, like all Chicago music. Me and him were listening to that heavy. And then we would like put on beats and be freestyling in school, like in that class. Or like we had PE together too, we'd be freestyling in the locker room. And then one day we're like, bro, we should just make a song. Like, like, like why not, you know? And he was like, I'm down. So we're like planning it out, writing lyrics and shit. But we didn't know how to get a studio or even how to record or anything like that. We had no resources at all when we were fucking young. And then we're only 13. So then, this is crazy. Um, one day, the, cr- the crazy part of how I found out how to get to my first studio is, so I was selling um, shoes on Opera. Like I was reselling Jordans and shit like that because I would always buy shoes. But then I would resell them, whatever, when I wanted to get a new pair. So I was reselling this one dude. He, he comes to my crib and tries to finesse me on some shoes. Like he what tried, do you do? Huh? <laughs> no, he was like, he was like, oh, bro, let me borrow these. I got a music video, like, or something like that. And I was like, Ooh. nah. He was at my crib. He's trying to take my shit. And I was like, I was like, nah. I was like, that's not gonna happen that way. Like, and he tried to be weird about it. This was your homie? Huh, no, he's some random dude online. Off road. Oh, fuck like, that. Like, <laughs> let me borrow one. Yeah, I, was like, I was like, fuck all that. <laughs> trying to flex. He, he, he seen I was young, and he was like older, like probably your guys' age, like at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At the time, he's like your guys' age. So. Oh hell no. I was like, I was like. Nah, he was like trying to finesse me and shit, and I was like, nah, that was weird. He said, let me hold these. Yeah, and I was like, I was like, no, but um, he paid me for some shoes, and then um, I go back inside. He bought some shoes off me or whatever, and I look at the money, and that shit's fake. I'm like, oh my god. Like, I, some of it was real, but the hundred he gave me was fake. You know, I was just trying to get it over, said and done, just get back into the crib, and it was fake. So I was like, what the fuck. And he blocked me on the app and all that shit. And I tried to finesse my shit. And I was like, hell no. I know how to work the system. I'm not stupid. He thought I was like a dumb little kid. You went to the gold. No, I went. I made a new account. Oh, hell yeah. yeah. And then I went on his account. And he was trying to sell them, resell them again. The shoes I just sold him. So I hit him up. And I got his address. Oh, he, he fucked he, up. He was an idiot. And I got his address. And I was like, I was like, yeah, you just tried to finesse me. I'm, now I'm about to come to my crib with my pops. Like, we're going to see what's really going to happen. Like, and he's like, nah, bro. It's a misunderstanding. He comes back to the crib and pays my money or whatever. And he's like, all like scared like a bitch. And I was like, I'm only 13 or like 25. Like, like, bitch. And then, <laughs> it was Fuck. funny. And then I was like, fail, dude. And, and then um, he's right there. He's telling me, he's like, yeah, bro, I'm sorry. Like, I didn't mean to like mix anything up. I didn't know it was fake or whatever. And then he was like, um, if you want, I mean, me and you were talking about music. If you want, you can come through to my studio or whatever. And you can make some music. And then my ass, I'm like, sure, whatever, you know? So then, say um, less. <laughs> I was like, say less. And what, I got my money back and I'm going to get some free studio time. So then, um, like a few weeks pass and I finally go to the studio. The homie doesn't come that we're supposed to make a song with. I just go to the studio and come to find out it's not even his studio. It's his homie studio. And he's like, I was like, what the fuck? Like, he's just finessing everyone. <laughs> <laughs> he's just finessing everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't, I didn't care. Amazing, I didn't care because his homies already knew I was coming and everything. But I, he was like making it seem like it was his shit or whatever. He was mixing it, mastering it. So I go there and I'm fucking nervous. Like 13, hanging out with like people your guys' age. And I was like nervous. I was like, fuck. I was like, what if my shit's weak? I was like, at school, I think I'm hard. Like, I'm like, damn, my music's gonna be hard and everything. But then you finally get to the studio and you're like, oh shit. I was like, you're like, humbled and shit? Yeah, I was like nervous. I was like, fuck. So then, um, they're cool with me or whatever. That dude leaves, actually. The dude that said it was the studio, he leaves. And I'm, like, vibing with his homies. His homies are hella cool, you know. Funny as fuck. We're listening to beats and shit. And I found my first beat, and I hop on, and it took me, like, an hour. And I finished my first song. And back then, I was like, damn, this shit is hard. I was like, no one's touching me now. I, like, I, felt, I felt on. I was like, no one's touching me. Yeah, 13. <laughs> God, I felt cool. So then I record that first song, and I'm just anxious. I'm like, should I drop this or not? I'm, like, showing everybody my song in school. Like just off my phone, and they're like, "Yeah, that sounds cool. Drop it." And then so then I drop it, and like in the first day, the first day I get a thousand plays, and I'm like on SoundCloud, and this is back then when SoundCloud was big, like just like magic. Yeah, and I was like, "Bro, a thousand plays." I was like, "I'm in middle school right now." Like what? I was like, "That seems like a lot to me." You know, like now it's not considered a lot, but back then I'm like, "Bro, a thousand plays. That's a lot of people." You know, and then um, I go to school the next day, and like. All the like shorties are singing my song and shit. I'm like, shit, I'm on. Damn, like, shit, one man. day. Uh, no, it was like a weekend. I dropped on a Friday. Oh hell so yeah! Weekend, shit, man, and man. I go there and they're like taking videos like this. Oh, shit, they're taking videos <laughs> like this and my like singing my song. Shit, I wish I had that video. The homie DP knows what I'm talking about. And the shorties are singing and shit like that. And I'm like all hyped up. I'm like shit. I'm all gassed up. That's it. So after that, I'm like Lambo. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was like, I was like, shit, I'm about to be up soon. You know, and I was going like, crazy. <laughs> 
And um, so after that point, I was like, I went to those dudes' studio like, um, I think two times after that, made two different, two other songs. And after those two songs, I was like, bro, the quality of this shit is terrible. I learned like, I learned more about- What were they recording then? Um, they had like a little booth, probably like a, like a mic, like, probably a mic cheaper than that. That's like a pretty decent mic, but like, like this cheap setup, you know what I mean? Like some home, like home studio shit, like everybody else's home studio, but their mixing and mastering wasn't as good, you know? Ass. But at the time, like when I first did my first song, I was like, oh, that shit's cool, you know, at least I'm getting on a mic and stuff. But after that, I was like, okay, now I could like, I figured out more about studios, like what to ask for. And then they, they kind of taught me a game, you know, like, even though they didn't have like the best equipment, they taught me some shit. And my homie guy at the time, me and him were best friends. Um, he was putting me on game too. He was doing his research. He was like, if you want to take this serious. That's why me and him became um, best friends because me and him were into the same type of clothes, like Supreme and everything. We were buying Supreme, buying the newest Jordans, all that. So me and him were both into that, but we never like really hung out like that. But then when I started doing music, he seen it. He was like, if you want to take it serious, he was like, let's do it, you know? So um, he started managing me and then we started figuring out more about studios, like how to go to studios. And then I want to say like during summer, I was like, Summer of what? Um, after eighth grade, going into ninth grade, I was like, I was spending all this money going to studios. I probably spent over like two thousand dollars going to studios when I could just buy my own studio setup for around that much, you know. So, um, we're just sitting there. I'm saving my money, whatever. My dad helps me out with some money, and I go and I buy my own studio setup. And um, I was like, damn, it's over with now. I'm about to make music every day. So we set it up in my friend Guy's house, and at that point. This is like when I was really going up. I'm like already in ninth grade. In ninth grade, I was like, started making music every day. I would ditch school, because I started going to a different high school. I would ditch school and then um, go to my friend Guy's house and make music. Like I was like, fuck school, I just wanna do music, you know? And then um, I was doing music heavy. Like my music was, at this point, it's like probably a year in, getting like 5K plays, like first two days, like type shit like that. Like I was going up, like, and back then, like SoundCloud, if you got 10K plays, you were doing good. And, like your song is up if you're getting like 10K. So if like 5K in two days, it's like unheard of. And like my homie DP, he was one of his songs that like blew up on SoundCloud. In like two days, he had like 25K. But they deleted his shit. Like after a week, someone deleted his, hacked his account and deleted it. Really? So me and him, like we're going up. And then around that same time, we were going to LA networking and doing shit like that, like meeting bigger artists and stuff like that. Like, we would go to no. Do you guys know who No Jumper is or no? For we, sure. Um, <laughs> you were doing, you're hanging out right there on that. We, we would go to the store. I have videos like me in the back of the store, like where all the artists hang out and everything. We didn't know him personally, but the homie Hakeem, he worked in the store next. next oh, you know Hakeem? Yeah. I hear. I always hear them talk about him. He's in one of my in my first music videos. He's in the music video. Oh, for he, real? He worked in the store next door. I mean, that's we, crazy. We were all cool with him. So, all those stores right there next to Awesome Shit, they have a door leading to the back. So it's not just Awesome Shit that has like the door leading to the back. So we would be back there. We were always on Melrose doing something. There's an alley back there, right? Yeah. And then there's a neighborhood too. Yeah. So it's like all that shit, a little hangout. So we would be back there and like people would be popping through like Smoke Perp. Like we'd be seeing all these artists. But like we weren't, we weren't fanboys. We weren't like, oh my God. Like we'd be like, what's up, bro? Like keep it pushing. Like Yeah, you're from LA. Well, Long Beach, but still you're from over there. So. Yeah. Well, when I say from out. Long Beach, it's kind of hard because I did move around a lot too. You're you from know? LA then? Yeah. LA, but I like to say Long Beach because that's where I was. Even if I was like living in Norwalk, I was Your still, home base. I, I was still hanging out in Long Beach, you know. Just because I lived there, I wouldn't go home for days. I'd be home. I'd be out with the homies for like three yeah. or four days, staying at their crib, but then go back home, shower up, get my clothes or whatever, and then go back out, you know. Because people from Long Beach, you don't really yeah, play in like LA, right? You're not like I'm from but LA. When I moved down here, a lot of people don't know what Long Beach is, or they'll well, be annoyed. Yeah. They'll, they'll be like, "Oh, you're from where Snoop Dogg's from?" I'm like, <laughs> "That's all they know." <laughs> I'm like, "That's all they know." So I just say I'm from LA, like. From people down here, but outside looking in, it's all LA. Yeah, but like people don't know when you're there, how yeah. everyone kind of that's why when um borders themselves when I'm down there, they're like, Where are you from? I'm like, Long Beach. Oh, LA? No, I'm from Long Beach. Like, yeah, you're from Long Beach, the, the, where the LBC hat. Yeah, <laughs> so um, we're hanging Thanks. out on Melrose a lot. Um, I have, I have a music, music video shot down there. We were going crazy, you know, doing music, getting fly, going to quit like um, round two, getting closed, just networking. And we're young, like. At this time, we're probably 14. We're young, hanging out with Hakeem. He was cool. He was getting us around Adam and stuff like that. Um, we never got to know him like that, but like we were just around, you know, around the scene. We were always going to shows, like at the observatory in Orange County. We were always going to shows. Um, we were meeting artists in 
like Melrose is networking, trying to like make music and everything. And then the biggest break any of us got was my my homie Tay Fetty. Um, he hangs out with Shoreline now. We, we were going to Shoreline parties. Oh shit! In Hollywood, they would have these parties like in their um, like little I don't know, kind of like a condo. And my homie um, Tay started hanging out with Shoreline. At this time, they're not big. They're like getting like maybe like hundred k per song. It was before the Fox News shit. Yeah, it was before all that. Before they were getting big, they were still like doing their shit. Like we would listen to them and everything. They were like, running around writing, yeah. writing everywhere. Huh? Yeah, so. We're hanging around them, and then um, they started to take off, and my homie Tay and all of us were chilling with them. Tay is more connected with them, though. We were just around, you know? We were always around the scene. We were too young. We are hanging out with people that were older than us, so, like, we were too young to realize we were around and not taking advantage of it. We are just chilling. We are like, oh, this is cool, like, in the moment, just partying and stuff. We never took advantage of our resources we had. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, we were just chilling around L.A., and then I want to say... Um, by the time I got into sophomore year, um, we started doing parties heavy, doing parties, my homie, um, Dino, my homie Funes or DJing. And then we had some other people, part of our clique that was just like doing parties, fat ass parties. Making, All over or just Long Beach? Um, Whittier, um, Cerritos, Norwalk, Long Beach, Lakewood. We're doing parties everywhere, you know? The homie Dino was really like the front man for all that shit. He was really like doing parties heavy. When he first started doing parties, um, I would go with him, you know, to make sure he wasn't getting like finesse on his money or anything just making sure he could do his thing you know yeah if anyone was looking at him funny you know i was there you know never like let him go alone so me and him were cool for like for a while like hanging out every day every week and we're going to parties and he was making his money but at first he just started being a dj and then we seen the money that people were bringing in for parties because in kingman no one charges for parties but down no there, yeah people have down there you're like oh three dollars to get in you know and yeah. that shit adds up when you have like Girls free before 10. Yeah, shit like that. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, we were, fire shit. yeah, we were throwing parties or what we started, he started DJing parties and then after a while we're like, we should just go our own, you know? And he started throwing his, like his own, um, the homie Funes, he's my best friend actually, like me and him have been known each other since like kindergarten or some shit like that. Um, he became a DJ and I started rolling with him more and, um, I would basically be the hype man, like turning everybody up, you know? Like, even the homie Dino, I have old text messages on my phone. People would be like, oh, you're going to come DJ? Bring your homie Joey. Like, oh, okay, you turn shit up. They would have me perform sometimes, too, and shit like that. But um, You had bitches on your shoulders and shit? <laughs> nah, no, like that. We, were, we were just more turning up and everything. It was, by the time, like, it was still, like, SoundCloud days. So, like, Little Uzi and shit like that was playing, like, more turn up shit where niggas are mosh pitting and stuff. So, we started doing that, and that's when our names really started getting out there, like, we were just on parties, like going to parties, throwing them, DJing them, whatever. Like we were just doing it all, just trying to make money. Like we were always trying to make money, like no matter what. That was like our biggest thing. Like, so all my homies that were, I was going to LA with, like Melrose and stuff. We stopped like stopped connecting, and I started hanging out with a different crowd and like doing these parties and stuff like that. And I was still doing my music, but at that time it started like slowing down a little bit. I was more focused on like partying and stuff like that. I even showed you a video. Yeah, yeah, I showed you a know. video of my party before I like. You're going away. That was your going away party. Well, I didn't know I was leaving. I kind of had an idea, but I was like, "Fuck it, like let's just do that shit." Oh, they fucking finessed you. No, your no, parents no. or what? No, 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 no. I'll get into that right now. Um, story time. <laughs> story time. <laughs> so, um, when we threw that party, that party was crazy. Like it was the last thirty minutes because some dumb bitch had a pass out. And have shit. a seizure. Yeah, and shit. Can't, can't handle their own shit. <laughs> yeah, can't handle it. <laughs> but in the first like thirty minutes, we had like. 350 made 400 people there and my dad was sitting out there collecting all the money and shit and the party got shut down because that female and then me and all my homies the house was inside it was packed like we didn't have no inside but once the cops came because it was all in the backyard once the cops came all the homies came inside and i was like really realized i was like damn i got hella homies like i was like that's crazy like all these homies right here in the house are just my homies and my homie fun is his homie so we're all in there cramped we're like paranoid like what the fuck are the cops gonna do like some bitch almost died on my front lawn and they're, they're screaming at my um my dad's wife. They're screaming at her like, "Oh, did you know there, this party was going on?" So that we had the stage in the back there. We're the first party to have a stage. Like we had DJ, we had performances, like all that shit. And um um the cops were yelling at my um, dad's wife, and then they they went and we're all in the crib. And I was like, "Fuck, we're all cool." She was like, "You guys are good." And I go to the room, and he opens up his box full of money, and I was like, "Fuck!" I was like. It was like all ones and fives and shit, cause I mean, three bucks, yeah, three bucks and shit like that. But I seen all the money we counted out, and it was like a thousand something, and I was like, damn, I was like, we really did that. Like, at that time, 
you're making maybe like 500, 600 from a party. Like if you were just throwing it with other people. But um, me and him seeing that money, I was like, fuck. I was like, this is the way, you know, this is the way to go. But then um, after that party, I still chilled in like Cali for a minute. Um, but then some family shit happened or whatever. And um, one day I just got up, my mom was visiting. My mom was already living down here in Arizona and she was visiting. And I was like, I called her up and I was like, I'm gonna go with you. I'm gonna go back to Arizona with you. It was just the best decision at the time for myself, you know? Just to, I wasn't doing so good like in school and everything like that. So I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna move. Damn, you chose to move here? Mm-hmm. It wasn't like, it wasn't because I wanted to, you know, I love all my homies and everything. Better choices? Yeah, it was just like family problems and I wasn't doing good in school. You know, I wasn't getting my shit done. Um, going to these parties were getting more dangerous. Every time we were throwing them, everybody realized how much money you were making, you know? So, like, there was fights, you know, shit like that. And most parties we go to, we're cool with the, whoever's there. Like, we know everybody there already because they know us. But then it just started getting dangerous. Like, I noticed, like, people were starting to move differently. And I was like, nah, I'm not with that. Like, I, I knew Just something sketchy yeah, shit. Yeah, it started getting sketchy, and I was like, I'm not about to get caught up and like ruin all the shit I got going on for myself. Because at this time, my music is still going up. Like, I'm still doing music, I'm still doing numbers. Not as much as it was like the year before, but it was still doing good, you know? Um, so I chose to move, and um, just like, I was at the homie Funes' house, and I was like, What do you think I should do? And he was like, To be honest, he was like, Your best decision is probably moving. He was like, It's gonna be better for you. And then I was like, All right, so that's the last thing I had to hear. So we get up and move, and then I come out here, and for the first, like, I think, like, it was almost a year. The, almost the first year I was here, I was going back and forth to Cali, like, every weekend down here. Still going to parties, still going to the studio. You're still like, trying to, like, run parties, too? Yeah. Um, no, not running as much, because I stopped, like, I started, like, um, getting separated from my homies. My homie Funes was always there, though. Me and him were always FaceTiming, no matter what. But I couldn't, it's hard to, like, manage money and shit like that. Because if, if, back then, like... To throw parties, it started getting to where you had to get a venue. You know, it wasn't you couldn't just do it at houses no more. They were getting shut down too quick, so we would have to get venues and stuff like that. So I was like, I'm not even gonna worry about money. Like, I'm gonna get finesse somehow if I'm if I'm all the way in Arizona and I'm yeah. trying to send money to California to throw parties. So I was like, Nah, I'll just go just because I missed all the homies and missed being back in town. So I just started going down there, going to parties and shit. Um, every weekend, going to the studio, making more music. When you say venues, you mean like quinceanera and wedding yeah, venues? Yeah, like so fuck, like, God damn. Because it started getting to the point where there's like two thousand people showing up to the party. Yeah, and it's all over like everybody from like LA everyone just, underage. Everyone's underage too, yeah, mostly. Yeah, everybody's coming, you know. Yeah, and so um, I started going to that shit, um, and then I want to say like it was almost a year since I moved, and then um, I I met my baby mama, um, and then started dating her, so it started slowing down. And then after like three months of us dating, she got pregnant. Ooh, quick, quick yeah. shooter. <laughs> <laughs> Careful out there when you see him. <laughs> yeah, so, so she got pregnant. So after that, um, at first we were scared. Like it was like terrifying. Yeah, and I was like, yeah. I, I, at that time I was only 16. God. I was, I was only 16. And I was just I like, like, <laughs> I was like, so I was definitely scared, you know? But after, after like a month or two, it started settling in so I stopped going down there as often you know because I had to be with her well not because I had to but I wanted to yeah if, if, if I asked her you know if it was cool she was always cool with me going down there so I did when she was pregnant I did a few times when I started getting closer to her due date I was like nah I couldn't so and also my studio my home studio I had was at my homie Funes' house so it was still down there in California I never moved it down here because I got up and left so quickly I didn't have enough time to move all my shit so um when I moved, when my um, girl got pregnant, I just slowed down on the music because I stopped going down there as often. And then um, once the baby was born, happiest day of my life, like I totally forgot about all like the music and everything like that, you know? I was like, fuck all that, I was like, fuck all the parties and everything. So like for, um, she's 10 months now. And then um, since the whole time she was born, I stopped worrying about music. I had to stop listening to beats. Like I was always, no matter if I wasn't making music, I was always listening to beats and writing. But after she was born, I like forgot about all that. Like I didn't really care about it. I mainly cared about her. Just cared about my daughter or whatever. But then I want to say like, maybe two months ago, she was like eight months. Um, I went down to California and I seen my homies. It was just for a day. 
um, I went down with my dad and we I seen my homies and it just like brought all that shit back. I was just like fuck. I was like I was like really doing something, you know, that was like positive that was gonna make me money or whatever. It wasn't really about the money, it was just something positive. I was having yeah. fun and I was people were liking it. And it just came all back to my like head and I was like, I got back home and I felt motivated again. It's like living you got back here? Yeah. When I got back here I felt motivated again and I was just like, damn, I was like I should just do it again. I was like, I'm good at it, you know. Like you some people they don't have an ear for music, but I know my music's good, you know. I'm not trying to be cocky or anything, like uh-huh. I, just, I just know, you know. So um I got back and I was like, I'm good at this shit, like why am I gonna stop? You know? I did I did too much like when I lived there in order for me just to give up. I was like, I have potential, you know. So these past two months I've been on my shit like grinding. Grinding, like all my studio stuff is at my house now. So I have my own home studio. Um, and I've been going to Vegas to hit up like a real studio with like a real engineer and stuff like that. I got a song I really like. And then Oh um, really you go to Vegas? Yeah. When I record my music I'll record it at home first. But I'm not the best at mixing mastering, so I'll go down to like a, a real real studio um, and have that engineer mix it and like redo some vocals and shit. But yeah, these past two months, the, the homies come over to my crib. We all make music. I got all of them to hop on the mic and shit like that. For real? Yeah. You got a home studio? Yeah. It's cool. It's similar to this, like. Um, some like, some, some like, <laughs> some decent. Yeah. <laughs> they can't see it, but it's similar to that. Um, but now the homies they come to the crib, record or whatever. I just like really like. I don't want to go out or do anything. It's more about the music. Like, I like going out and stuff like that, but it's more about my daughter just doing the music right now. Because yeah. I've had jobs, like when I moved here, um, I had I got a job. I've had two jobs since I've been here. And working a nine to five just ain't for me. Like, I hate it. Like, <laughs> I hate it. Like, I, I sit there and I'm like, I'm wasting like all my talent. Like I had talent for football. Like I've been playing football since I was three years old. And I wasted that. I, didn't, I fucked up in my grades, so I couldn't go to college for that. I was like, now this music shit I have talent for, I'm not gonna waste it again, you know? I was like, I'm gonna pursue it. And if I don't make it, if something tells me that I, I can't do it no more, then that's fine, I'll be happy working a nine to five. But when you're working a regular job, and you're like, I could be doing this, and potentially be making money. Like, it's like, heartbreaking. You're sitting there, you're like, fuck, why am I even here? It's like, not motivating whatsoever. It sucks, like. Shout out to all of us in the struggle. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> Trying to make it out. Yeah, so. I've been pursuing that shit recently. Like these past two months, like I've been back on my music shit. Cause back then I was on it heavy, trying to record every single day, and then my life took a different turn and I stopped. But now I'm back on it. You know, so you got a little speed bump. Yeah. Some turbulence. Yeah, but it, it's crazy that you didn't realize like everyone you were around and everything that was happening at the time. You didn't realize like yeah, you didn't take any advantage because you just didn't know about yeah. it. I was being a kid, you know. Just like, regular life over there, going. Yeah, it's just like, regular shit. But like shit cool. over here, that's like big shit. I know. I tell people over here, like they're like, "Oh, where are you from?" Yeah, people don't like, believe you. Yeah, they're like, "Shoreline Mafia, smoke perp." Like all these people, like I have old DMs, a little pump and shit like that. Like I have all the like. I don't. I don't go out there and like look, look. Like I'm not like that. You know what I mean? Like if they ask me, they ask me. You know, I'll tell them. But then they don't believe me. I'm like, I get down here, it's hard. But when you're down there, you're on railroads. You're seeing famous people everywhere. You know. They're not even considered famous. You see them so often that they're just like regular people, you know? Some people, they fanboy or whatever, but I was, I'm telling you, we were down there every single day, like, especially during summer, every day. If we're in school, every weekend we're going to a show, doing all this, you know what I mean? So, like... It was just regular. It was just regular. Like, you'll see, like... If it was Drake or someone, like, that's different, you know? Some superstars. Yeah, yeah. Some, it, it wasn't superstars, but it was, like, people that are superstars now, but back then... They're reachable, though, yeah. right there. Yeah, like, back then, like, Little Pun, Smoke Perp, all these people, like, they weren't as big as they are now. You know, now you're not going to touch them. But back then, they were just walking the block, like, like 6 9 me, the homie DP, the homie Christian, the homie Josh were just walking the street. He was walking solo down the block by himself. And he was... He just got done doing his no-jumper interview. With the rainbow shit? Yeah, yeah, he was like... But he wasn't a nobody. He was like a nobody. He was, yeah, he wasn't big. He was nobody. Like, yeah. I'm telling you, we seen him walking down the block. He passed my shoulder like by himself. You know, no security, nothing. No homies. Damn, you like, didn't jump him? I should have. R.I.P. R.I.P. 69. I would have recorded it and then I would have posted it now and I'd be famous because everyone don't like him. But I'm just joking. Yeah, that was already before, <laughs> that was before he did all that. So. It's more, but like, that's what I'm saying. Like, People like him, like now he's but like, yeah, just brushing, you probably didn't even brushing really shoulders was, with people. Yeah. Like, and I didn't realize, like, I should have been there, like, no matter who it was, I should have been talking and trying to network, you know, trying to do work. 
But I was just sitting there chilling, like we were like smoking weed or whatever, you know, doing like high school shit, you know? Yeah, just regular shit. Like, but if I took advantage of it at that time, no, like I don't even know where I'd be right now, you know what I mean? Like, my homie Tay, he's he goes on tour with like Phoenix Flex and stuff like that. He took advantage of it, but he was older than us, you know? Now he's on tour with them and doing shit like that, like with Shoreline. Sick. And so that, like, I don't even talk to him no more. Like, my homie Guy, um, I was with him when he got his first call back from modeling, and we were in his room making music in my studio, and he got the call back, and he's like, oh, you're going to be um, doing this runway with Snoop Dogg. So he, he did that for the first time, and, like, it was, like, the next day, one day call and back. And he's the same age as you? Yeah, same age as me. And then once he did that, it was over with. Um, I moved down here, and I start seeing him on TikTok, and he has, like, like um, ads for Go and, like, Nike and Adidas, like, He's going up with his modeling. I think he lives in New York now or something like that on his own. Damn. Like, they all, like, they all had dreams and they did that shit, you know what I mean? But me, I was more, like, um, focused on just having fun. Like, I didn't I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I was making the music, but when I was outside, it wasn't about the music. Like, you know, if I was in the yeah. studio, it was about music, but anywhere else I went, it wasn't about the music. I didn't care. But if I did care, I'd be in a totally, totally different position right now. That shit's crazy. It, fu- it fucks me up because I'm like, fuck, bro. Like, I had so many opportunities. Like, just just even back then, being in the back of, like, No Jumper, I was like, everybody's, like, thought that shit was so cool. I was like, that shit's regular. Like, these are the homies back here, you know? But now, like, he is... Well, he's been big, but, yeah. like... But now it's like, no one's getting back there if you're not fucking famous, you know? But back then, like, if I was back there and people were waiting in line in front of the store just to get inside the store, and I was in the back of the store hanging out with Already. everybody. Already. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, we're doing shit like that at such a young age, and I didn't realize it. But now I do, and now I just gotta get myself back to that position, you know, no, no matter what. And then once I get back there, I know what to do. I already know the mistakes I made, so I just yeah. gotta get back to that point. Just gotta get on it and just fucking keep it pushing. And You know what you wanna do. You got videos coming. You got hella music coming. Yeah. You got YouTube. You just started your YouTube channel. Yeah, I have, like, three other YouTube channels. That have you got three? God damn. <laughs> like, that's before. Like, back then, my homie guy was managing one, and then... That's what one music video is, and the other music video my homie Funes posted on his. So now I'm just trying to get everything lined up where it's me. Like, I'm posting everything myself, you know? Except for Apple Music and Spotify, because you got to have a distributor to do that. But everything else I want to have in my name, my email, and all that shit, you know what I mean? Because, I don't know. I wish I had all the emails and shit, the other shit I had, because there's so much shit. I, there's yeah. probably old-ass songs I don't even know I have that are there, and I just don't know about them, you know? Yeah. There's so much shit that's missing. Like, all the shit in my phone and on my email is just like a little sliver of all the stuff I've done for music. I've done so much with music that people don't even realize because I don't post it. I have hundreds of songs I've never posted. Like, I have so much music, it's not even funny. That's crazy. And that's what you were trying to wipe out? No, I don't care about that shit. I just want to, like, I don't want someone to go on my SoundCloud and be like hearing 14 year old Joey and they're like, what the fuck is this? Like, this is embarrassing. It's it's ass. It's, yeah, it's like back then it was cool. Like everybody was fucking in the back then, but music evolved, so it's like yeah. different now. Yeah, definitely. That who Adam had, he got big, but he had everyone before they were famous. Yeah, he had everybody like. In the he background. had Yadi before he was like. Yeah. And big, the, like everyone, right? Yeah, he had everybody. Like that's why it was weird, weren't, but. Back then, they were famous, but, like, not to the world. Like, now if you say Little Yachty, everybody... Yeah, everyone knows Yachty, Yachty, but... Even if someone that listens, listens to the country, they're going to know who Yachty is, you know? But back then, they were still big. Like, we were heavy on SoundCloud. I'm telling you, like, we listened to probably, like, everybody that posted on SoundCloud. Like, that's what everybody did. It was, like, the Apple Music and Spotify at that time. So, if some... These people were getting, like, probably, like, 2 million on SoundCloud. That's big. Like, back then, you're like, holy fuck. Like, these dudes are big. But now Drake's getting, like, 500 million on a music video. So the numbers don't compare, but it was always like, yeah. in LA, those SoundCloud people, like, they were famous to us. Like, they were, like, hella famous, even though they weren't even rich or anything, you know? Well, like, the LA scene kind of made everyone. Like, Pete, too, right? Yeah. Oh, well, that's crazy, you know? He, he, like, grew in LA, right? Fuck it. Yeah. With all the, every, okay. everyone you're talking about? That's what I'm saying. Like, Little Tracy, Little Pete, Little Raven. I have a song with Little Raven. That's Little Tracy's um cousin. And Little Tracy and Little Pete were, like, tight. Fuck. So, I'm telling you, I've known people who would go to these shows, like, there's a dude named Duop Kane, he's pretty big now. We went to his first show in LA and there was probably like fifty people there, you know? But we were there, me and my homie DP trying to network. And my homie DP, when he was doing music, he at the time his music was way better than mine. He had like a bigger vision for music. You know, and he was doing like little Uzi type shit, whatever. I was trying to start my own type of like sound. Sound. And he was doing his own sound too, but like his his sound was like stuff that people were gonna like, like right there. You know, at that point in time. 
and he was going up like he knew hell of people like he he like Roddy Rich like really followed him like he really knew Roddy Rich like that before Roddy Rich blew up he knew Kalen for real for real I don't know if you guys know who that is but he's getting big like Duop Kane he knew all these big people like even the people around me knew people that were like big you know it wasn't just me so everybody was connected and some of us took advantage and some of us didn't so that's like the only thing that sucks is like I wish I did I wish I was one of those people that took advantage because my music would be up right now. You guys, you still got time, dude. Yeah, I still got yeah, time. Yeah, like you still dumb, full yeah. of cum. I, know, I, really, <laughs> I just felt hella old because I had a baby. Like, I'm like, damn, I had a baby. <laughs> That's <laughs> crazy, <laughs> bro. <laughs> what are we? <laughs> no, I'm just saying, I feel that way. Like, you guys aren't old. I'm just saying, I feel that way. Like, I had a baby, you know, and stuff like that. Young as old man. I know. That's like, how you feel? <laughs> about to start getting gray hair and shit already. Like, damn, this is crazy. I just feel old. Older than I really am. I know I still got a lot of time. My parents always tell me that shit. Yeah, for sure. Good. So, how has uh, fatherhood changed you? Mm. Were you different before? You had to be different, right? Oh, shit. I was way different, bro. I was. You feel I, like you grew up a lot? I was a menace, bro, when I was, in, when I was back in Long Beach. Um, I did grow up a lot, but there's still stuff I do now that, you know, I still got to work on, you know? Um, That's fine. You're 18. Yeah. Got time. We I'm got still, it. I'm yeah. a young dad. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> when I was in we California, I was. I was always partying, skating. Um, I, was always, I was always doing something like football. I was always doing something. I was hella active, like, like whatever I was doing, I was always gonna like do it to the fullest, you know. So I always put time into everything. But now that I have a daughter, she's like my biggest priority, you know. So anything else I want to do is like kind of like when I have time. But now having her, I can have her on my lap, um, in the studio or something, you know. So that's why I like. Music's really cool too because you could do it no matter the circumstances. Like if I want to, I could record a song on my phone. It's not gonna be the yeah. best quality, but you could always do it. You know, like it's something you could always do. I realized that like back then I was like I have no resources, but I really did. I just didn't know, but now I know I could do this music shit regardless of, of what happens. You know, that's why I like it so much. That's why I have a big passion for it because it's always gonna be there. It's never gonna leave my side. You know what I mean? And your daughter gets to grow up with this, yeah. bumping daddy in the Denali. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's cool just to be around, like, what we do, you know, like, the podcast and shit is dope, but, like, to just be, like, surrounded by so many people that are, like, creative. Yeah, that want to do some, some I, That's shit. what I like, too. That like, shit's tight, honestly. I like being in the studio, like, when people come to the studio, if they're not sitting there, like, they don't have to be recording music. If they're not giving me feedback or anything, if they're just sitting there on their phone fucking around, they get kicked out of the studio. It's simple. But like, I like even having the homies at the studio. It's fun because they'll sit there and they'll be like, nah, like, that shit sounds terrible. Or like, yeah, that shit sounds hard, you know? Because you need that feedback. Like, you can't just... Because if you're listening to yourself, you're going to tell yourself you sound good. Even that shit just... I'm, <laughs> I'm telling you, I, I have made songs that are so ass, but in the moment, it sounds great. Like, in the that's moment, that's, that song will sound so good. Like, I have hella songs in my, on my fucking laptop. But you're under the influence probably, too, you know? I know, I'm, when I, I don't like I'm <laughs> sober as fuck. No, I, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't like You're doing extra music. Wrong. I don't like doing music when I'm like high or anything. I don't even smoke weed, so. But um, I do like to drink a little, but I, I only do music when I'm 100% sober. You never altered your never. mindset? You yeah. got to one time. You don't think so? You're pretty drug free overall? Yeah. I mean, like, I was never a heavy weed. When I did smoke weed, I wasn't heavy. I'm a weed smoker. If it was there, it was there. If it wasn't, I don't care. Um, drinking, I didn't start, I didn't get drunk for the first time until I turned 18 in April. I got drunk, like, probably, like, on my birthday, I think, for the first time ever in my life. What did you drink? Um, some bitch. Some claws or what? Like, swear enough. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. I don't know what it was, but. Um, some Mike's hard. Yeah, and then, like, um, the only other drug I've tried is LSD. Oh, like, hell yeah. I did, really? it, I did it one time, and that shit just felt like I was super high. It didn't even do anything. Oh really? You didn't get in? You I didn't, didn't get, get therapy from it? I didn't get anything. Like I didn't see anything moving. Lights. Oh, that's a shame, dude. <laughs> I just felt really high, and I fucking ate some Pringles like hell of fast. What kind of Pringles? Like man. the ones in the can. I ate that shit. Some LSD fast. Pringles, bro. <laughs> LSD flavor. <laughs> like, like, so I haven't really been a drug hit or anything like that. Like you felt like really high? Yeah, just like I was like stoned out of my mind. Like for how long? Like twelve hours. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, yeah, uh, it was just 12. Have that's a day. It. Yeah, no, it fucking sucked. Oh, look at that, bro. The come down was the worst because I started coming down in the morning 
and I was like around my mom, like around my family. Oh, hey. And I was like, fuck, and I was all yeah. tired and shit. So it sucked too. That's why I never want to really do it again. My homies, they do it and they're like, oh, you need to try this shit. My homies are bigger drug users than I am. They like to smoke, do acid. So they're not bad influences though. They, they don't like try to yeah. fuck me. They're like, they know when they smoke, they're like, they get out the car. You know, they'll smoke outside. They don't care about it. That's what's really cool about that too. It's like I surrounded myself around people that respect how I want to do things. So you mostly record when you're like sober. Mm-hmm. Always sober. For I, sure. I, I've time. never, I've never recorded yeah. a song. I've never been in the studio recording or anything when I've been drunk or faded or anything, ever. Nice. I want to try it when I'm drunk because I'm drunk. I'll be feeling myself. I'm like, you, yeah, you got to. I'll be like, oh fuck, like I gotta do something. I, I feel like a fourth of my songs have been like drunk. <laughs> That's what's up. <laughs> I swear though, when I'm drunk, so I'm beyond there sound like a snake or something on the song slurring and shit. Like, Why? I don't know. I just slur when I'm drunk. Like, Dude, I what know. I notice is when like I'm making a song or like I'm rapping, like I don't pronounce the whole word. Like, I, know. <laughs> I know. Like I notice that like, I'll say like three-fourths of the word. Like what? Give me an example. <laughs> like say like, like just for example, like, I don't know how to explain it, but like I, know I don't, I don't say like the last like. I know. I think I know what you're saying. Yeah. Like two letters of the. You talk ebonics. You hit him with your street talk, right? Like if I say if I say like no cap, I just no like cap. say no like cap. no cap. No cap. <laughs> no, no cap. cap. <laughs> and then with that, da, 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 yeah, I that. I like mean. I don't like finish it. Yeah. I don't know. So your process is you just fucking no, but I feel like even if I'm no, corona, it's over, even if I'm sober though, I do that too. So like, it, it probably has nothing to do with it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's just your flow. It's just, it's just how you are. Yeah, that's one of my problems too. I don't finish words. The fucking engineer be like, finish your fucking word. I'm like, I'm sorry. This is how I, how I talk. You said people slurring on them, but like everyone on SoundCloud, they were they were all leaned out. Yeah, exactly. right. They're all. Oh, that was the sound. That was the but, whole that, sound. But that's there. what they say. But I know a lot of artists, sense. I know a lot of artists that will go in the studio, like not off anything, because some people they feel more in control, you know. Because I feel like if I'm drunk, I'm be sitting there fucking laughing like my ass off, like I'm trying to record here. That's just gonna be funny. I don't know. I've never tried it though. But and then there's some people that they always gotta do like LSD when they're recording. Or something. That's some fucking LSD. Like, there's, there's, there's some people trying to like record that. every day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, that's what I'm saying. Like, and then there's some people that only go record once a month, you know? Like, yeah, but they record hella shit. Dude, yeah. my cousin was here last week. He was here for a week. And he did, like, 12 songs. Absolutely. Like, he was... Yeah, I can't do that. Like, I'll do it day by day. Like, and what sucks, too, is that I'll start a song on one day, and I'll be like, I'm going to finish it tomorrow, and I'll listen to it. And I'm like, I don't like it no more. Throw it out. I'll throw it out. I probably have fucking hundreds of songs that are just a hook or a hook and a verse that are not even finished, you know? Shit, send them, bro. I'll hop on that. I'm going to start flashing crazy. You feel me? And now that the homies are recording, they'll be over my house and they'll be spitting on the mic and I'll get on with them too and then um, they'll finish my songs now. Like, if I have something I like but then I don't want to finish it, they'll finish it for me, bro. Send them. I'm going to send you something too. Got you, by the way. Send those stems. <laughs> so you got two videos out. XD45 coming out. Yeah, that shit's gonna. Shit's hard, shit's fire, bruh. I, I, when I talked to Steve and Ant, they're like, You wanna see his video? I was like, Alright, they're like, Bruh, this motherfucker bought the fucking. brought all the guns out. <laughs> yeah, it's funny because Ant. Bro, <laughs> I'm not trying to expose you, man, but we just pulled them all out and he's like, Bro, make sure they're not loaded. I'm not trying to swear the bullets. I was like, I was like Nah, you wanna see <laughs> hey, we, we Ant, that's anybody, bro. <laughs> I, 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 I would just, just pull was, a gun out. Yeah. I just thought it was funny because we, like, I don't, think he was expect- right now. I don't think he was expecting that, but we pull out hell of a gun and he's like, I, I, I should have told him over a text message, but I wasn't thinking of it. And I was like, damn. We had bullets on standby and everything, but I was like, no. Nah, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, we won't do the games. I was like, we, we won't put them in, but I was like, trust me, none of them are loaded and everything. Video's hard, bro. It's about to go up. It's crazy, because I've, I've been sitting on that song for almost two years now. Really? That song's almost two years old. It's just tight. And all the homies, like, everybody that listens to that song, especially all my homies back in California, they're like, this is like, this is like your sound. Like you need to sound like this all the time. Cause I don't know why. It's like, I was in the studio at when I recorded that. I had an eight-hour studio session, and that was the last song I recorded. And it it was like at like four in the morning, and I was just yeah, like yeah. tired. Just recorded like a few other songs. Voice is all shot out and everything. And I recorded that, 
And at the time, I thought that was the worst song I recorded out of all of the sessions. Really? I had like two or three other songs I recorded that session. That you like liked better? I liked them way better. And I was like, my homies were like, no, this one is it. And back then, I was like, fuck that song. I was like, I like these other ones better. Because I was going for a different sound. But now, I like, I hear that, and I was like, I listen to the car, or like in my studio or something, and I'm like, this shit is so hard. <laughs> I was like, I don't know what it is. Let's like, say. And I showed my homie Jacob, and he's like anti, like, when he listens to music, he listens to like, old ass music like like oldies and shit. like oldies not not he's an old head though no nah, he, he's only 20. but he's a hip-hop old head like yeah he listens to like um tech nine and like oh like the, the old, like, like the old mexican rap and shit like that like he listens to shit like, like that. chicano rap and shit no not talking about back to the hotel yeah shit like that, <laughs> <laughs> shit like that. And, but he also listens to new music too but not as heavy so um i never really show him my music like that or i didn't used to at least because like this nigga doesn't like it my homie Daddy and homie Juju might like it, but I, he didn't. And I showed him this song, XD45, and he listened to it. He was like, nigga. He was like, this is it right here. And I was like, what? He's like, bro, this is hard. And I was like, when he said that, I was like, it's over. I was like, I was like, <laughs> I was like, I was like if he can like that song. I was like, if he likes that song, anyone's going to like the song, you know? And he was telling me, he's like, like if you drop this, I'm going to be listening to it in my car. It's not just like, oh, I like it. Like, when I put it on, they actually, like, know the lyrics and all that, like, that type of shit. So... That really motivated me too, because normally I don't care what anyone else thinks, but my homies around me and them telling me like you need to do it because you have like, I took them to the studio for the first time me in Vegas, and they they told me after the studio they're like you're actually like good at this like, we've heard you make music but like you in the booth it just like you're just good at it like if that makes sense like, this thing. So I was like it's motivating like having people close to me saying like pursue it you know like yeah. even my homie Jacob he's like I want to invest in you like I want to. Yeah, like, like say less, motherfucker. Say that shit. Cash out, like, fucking sell. Like, but him trying to do that, like the money he works for, he wants to invest in me. That says a lot, you know. That means they see oh, something yeah. in me. So that's why I think it's really cool. I'm like, I really fuck with that. Like, it motivated me some more that all these people are behind me and they really want me to do this shit. That's what makes it even better. Be lit, bro. About to go up, bro. Easily. So when's the first performance at the flyer party? Flyer party. You got to throw in here. Nah, people can't go with that for that here. Yeah, huh? nah. Have you mentioned some shit like that here? They'd be like, like, I had to pay for a party. They're like, like, what? what? Yeah, yeah, I've like, been to a few parties down here. They're cool or whatever, but they call them parties. I don't call them parties. These are more kickbacks. These are kickbacks. I've seen this antenna at one, and like... <laughs> yeah, this motherfucker was literally like, bro, the ones you throw in Cali are fucking parties. Yeah, so, they're calling it a party and stuff, but it's not. It's a kickback. It's something. Kingman, yeah. Because over there, people were coming from all over the county. Like, shit, bro, we throw a party in like, say, for example, in Whittier... Everybody from like Norwalk, Sarita, yeah, Los Angeles, like everybody's coming. Like, so they every, fucking... People from an hour away are coming, like Riverside are coming to our party, you know what I mean? Like people like that, like they know, and there's like hundreds of people there. You go to a Kingman party and it's a party, if there's like maybe 50 people there, like they'll consider that a party, you know? Like, but in LA County, you have options. You have like, there's like, you have like three parties. flyers yeah. right on you. Yeah. Like, we got to check out this one and. Yeah. You gotta, did you guys have fucking when you were through your parties? Did you have control of the tanks, or um, did you have uh, other people? For people that don't know what tanks are, uh, <laughs> that sucks. We're well, not gonna tell you. That's good. No, it's crazy because rappers are starting to do it now. Like, oh, for real? It's becoming big, but it's been a thing for a while. The ni- Nas or nitrous, you put in your, it actually goes in your car. But people would fill up tanks and put it in balloons, and you suck it. And you like feel stupid for like, wah, wah, like, for like an wah, hour wah, and if, wah, if you t- I, I would take a whole balloon and some people they pass I out I love my balloon yeah that's that shit that's that shit that video you said that video yeah that I know that's funny as fuck like now rappers are starting to do it like they have Gunna doing it he was like he had it in like a bottle and he was doing a show at the bottle and shit like that oh shit yeah. he was taking his feet people are starting to do it more and more now I'm like that shit's been old like their homies been, been doing it yeah I was like yeah it's, it's been a thing yeah, it's been, been a thing, thing. for like so, you never like, fucking trip like you never have you ever... You did it, right? Oh, I just do it a lot. Dude, you know that kind of reminds me of, like, be- riding on the bus in, like, high school, and they'd be like, let me choke you out so you pass out. And, like, people would do that. They <laughs> would just different. choke them, and then they'd, like, pass <laughs> out, and then the they'd just, shit? like, <laughs> throw them on the seat, and people would be passed out, and we used to just watch that shit all the time. What? That's like, not here. Bro, let's get that. Five bucks for three chokes, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Like, people would just be yeah. passed out, like, on the seat. Like, and we're just watching them, like waiting them for them to wake up, like oh that's, fuck, that's crazy. <laughs> that's crazy. Just start know. jumping up. <laughs> like, no, check his pockets. <laughs> they won't know who did it. Uh, Shit. Uh, 
But Nas, I have. I've, you've never fucking. I've taken a little bit too much. You know what I mean? Oh no! I, whoa, yeah, stumbled. Home, you know, like the big balloons were like when you hold them, looks like a fat ass nut sack or something. Yeah, like big titty, big, big long pregnant big titty. Me and my homie filled up a balloon like this, and we're like, whoever passes out first, and we oh took it. God. And I woke up, and this nigga's like laying across me, like he like fell on top of me, and I was like, bro, dude, that's my dick. That boner. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> 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 like, all, all, the, all the homies were like, your guys' balloons flew away, cause like. You could try to kill. A, I could kill a whole balloon back then. I don't know about now. I mean, my stomach here, bro. But like you, like I'm telling you, you're gonna pass out if you really do that shit heavy. Like we used to be in the car. We had a personal driver, and we would be in the car. Oh, not shit. No, it was our personal driver. Her name was um. What was that a driver? Uh, <laughs> personal driver. Yeah, because we would have the homies would be DJing, so they have fat ass speakers. Like I'm talking like big ass speakers, like this big, like thirty pound speakers, like two of them. Their mixer, the laptop, and all that. So we need a driver. Cause we didn't drive at the time, we were so young. So that's tight. It's fucking 12 years old. <laughs> <laughs> 12 years old. Was in the back. <laughs> Bruh. Yeah, that's just, it's crazy though. Like, I've definitely seen bitches hit their head from oh fucking Nas. <laughs> it's funny too, because they'll be stumbling too. Like they'll take it and like they're about to pass out, but not not going to. And they're like over here stumbling, swaying and shit like that. Yeah. It's funny. Yeah, my legs gone out one time, but yeah. the homies were there. Which, so. leg, which of your three legs? <laughs> the third one, and it went out. <laughs> <laughs> you still stay one well, then. The tripod, I got, I just fell for. Oh, all right, I'm good. <laughs> I'm tripod. not tall anymore. <laughs> but no, yeah, I definitely had like a little stumble. I was all embarrassed. They were, they were like, bro, this, look, look around. You know, like, everybody's on my yeah, side. Yeah, like, I was like, fuck. I felt like really dumb, you know? Yeah. Like, what? Cause that shit is some different shit. You literally don't hear. Yeah, it's like you you're, <laughs> bro, it's like it's like you're in your own like your whoa, own head whoa, for like, whoa, whoa. like. This is what it's like. Whoa, whoa, that's whoa, literally how whoa, it feels. Whoa, that's whoa, not just how whoa. it feels. You're like. It's just bass in your fucking brain, bro. Bro, one time was, for us. One time I was looking at my fingers like this and just going like this, and I passed out, and I woke up and I was still going like this. But when you pass out, it's not for like minutes or anything. It's literally for like ten seconds. seconds. Yeah, like, ten seconds. And you're when you take a balloon, you're you're only like like that for like. Maybe a minute. Like, you're not like that for that long. Can you believe, like, most of the country doesn't know about that? I know. It's like, it's like an L.A. thing, I guess. Like, a party scene thing. Like, I yeah. Is I've it seen it. It's it's strictly, huh? I guarantee that female from <laughs> from L.A. somewhere. From for sure. Way. The total asshole was like, <laughs> fill up my fucking balloon. Yeah. She has the accent. Yeah. She's from Montebello or something. For sure. She's on the east side. <laughs> Where'd you come from? La Puente. You came from La Puente? Yeah. I thought it was El Monte. No. Damn, I had went there. I was in. No, I would, always, I would always go to El Monte because I had this one fine ass female down there. Like, I, would, I, would always, I would always mob it to El Monte just to go to her crib. That's the only reason I know what El Monte Damn, is. That's far from Long Beach. Yeah, I'm seeing Mariscos out there too on the way. Why? Well, he's by San Pedro, dude. In the fuck, he's by the fish market. Right, right or not? Yeah, I know some fire fucking. In the LP? Mariscos in El Monte. It, um, El, El Monte is like by La Puente. Is that like all the same area? San Gabriel Valley. SGV? SGV. El Monte is full of like Mexican Mexicans too. Like, <laughs> I don't know what you're saying, dude. They're Mexican Mexicans. No, no. LP on the way? I don't speak Spanish. You got an LP? He didn't <laughs> Is no, that, I mean, you got, like, an LP or, like, an album or whatever. Oh, bro, I thought you were saying something. Bad idea that you got an LP on the way. I don't speak Spanish. <laughs> no, I, he said, like, it sounded like he spoke Spanish or something. That's yeah. talk so fast. Um, and she, he's like, what the fuck? <laughs> 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 I was like, what the I was like, LP. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> he's like, can I see your LP? <laughs> he's like, bro, you already nausea here right now. Like, like, <laughs> I wish you had to think. Just that song? Um, just that song for now I want to release. Um, actually, when I went to Vegas and recorded some music, um, it didn't come out how I wanted it to. Like the engineer didn't do his like do what I wanted him to do. So I do have more songs that I actually like and want to release, but I have to go re-record them and stuff like that. On the way. Yeah, on the way. But just that song right now. Um, I've only dropped one EP before. Um, it was back when I was like a long time ago. It was a four-song EP, but um. Yeah, projects and stuff like that, I'm more into like just dropping one song at a time until it's the right time, you know? I want to drop my first album when I'm like going up, you know? I'm not going to just drop a 12 song album and like only get 100 plays per song, you feel me? Like, yeah. It's, yeah. it's like a waste of energy. I'm going to say when you drop one song at a time, it gets more, more like plays. Hype. Yeah, more hype, more plays because if you drop an album, everybody's going to like one song or another, you know? But it's not 
everybody's not gonna listen to the whole album, you know. Did like, you listen to my EP? Yes, I did. One time, so I gotta listen to it again. Favorite song? Um, for the tape. Nice. And you? Big drop, big drop to live by my mama, big lot. Say less. You know what I'm saying? I was, the crazy thing, I listened to it after I got done getting a cut from you. I was driving home and I listened to it and I sat in the car for like the last, like, I didn't have like a song and a half left. So I sat there and listened to it. Hell yeah. Appreciate that. Appreciate yeah, you. It was hard. So before we end, what kind of, I want to know, uh, what kind of Jordans did the homie try to finesse you? <laughs> um, uh, there were some Jordan 8s, I think. He was trying to finesse me on some Jordan 8s. I think that's what they were. I don't know. I don't remember what colorway, but he tried to, and that's what started everything off. I would never... Damn, that was a <laughs> Ain't that crazy? Like, yeah. someone tried to finesse me, and that made me get into the studio. I wonder where he's at now. I'm trying to finesse him. <laughs> trying to finesse him 13. On offer up still. Yeah, I'm 42. <laughs> that's crazy. Like, it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's just crazy how it all started like everything I've been through already and there's still way more time I feel like that was a crazy ass episode just hearing the whole like everything cause yeah. I mean we talked a little bit in the shop you know Yeah. and you told me about like yeah being like around Shoreline and like other yeah. rappers and this and that and people don't understand like when I say if I was saying oh I'm cool with them that's one thing like I wasn't cool with them like that like I wouldn't go up and be like oh what's up Joey but I was around them you You're know always like, around. I was in like the si- the situation where not anyone could just be right there, you know what I mean? Like, I was in, like, a special, like, situation, but it wasn't royalty. Really, like, That's kind of like VIP. Yeah, but, like, they didn't know me like that. Like, if they look at me right now, they're not going to be like, oh, I know him. My homie Tay Fetty will. He, he hangs out with all of them, but, like, I was connected to their homies. But, like, if I really wanted to, I could have been part of the clique. You could have like, been posted up. Yeah, like I, I could have still been posted, you know what I mean? But like, I wasn't, like, I wasn't taking advantage of that. I was just in the moment, like I said. So, that's just how it went. Just mobbing it out to fucking Almani and shit yeah, at that age. Shooting shit. clubs up and shit. <laughs> XC45. <laughs> oh shit. Shit. That was a dope ass episode, bro. That shit was tight. That shit was cool. Thank you for having me, bro. That shit was. And we're gonna, have to have, we're gonna have you on again and shit, too. Chapter oh, two? Go, one, chapter two. Bro, that like, was just about music. I got shit about, like. Whole lot of gang shit. Whole lot of shit. There's a- questions I wanted to ask you, but shit, next time. Yeah, it's whatever. We can Part do it again. two. Yeah. Part two. After you guys have your, you know what I mean, collab EP or whatever. No, I'm scared. No, yeah, we're gonna work too. We need a collab ASAP. Yeah. It's lit. You know, yeah. Studio. Bro. Well, thank you, bro. Appreciate it, bro. Appreciate you. Thank you for another episode. All right, we out here, Bully Street Boys. Catch us on those. all platforms. <laughs> but just YouTube, really. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we out. Out. Yeah.